duo. So I'm Tommy. I'm Sophie. I'm Jerry. I'm Lily. So first, as um, you heard before, our challenge was to create a driver market plan for Parents in Motion to expand their driver market. So what is Parents in Motion? So they're a family rideshare company um, who need qualified drivers for their, for their business and they really pride themselves on their factors of safety, trustworthiness, and reliability. <laughs> <laughs> so first we're gonna start talking about our initial hypothesis and what um, our first assumptions about the adolescent rideshare market was. So we really wanted to start with the consumer. We spent the first whole week researching purely the consumer because we really wanted to understand what the consumer wanted in a driver, because there's no point in researching the driver market if you don't know what the customer actually wants. Next, we move to the driver. And since Parents in Motion has an 18-point step vetting process, we understood that this could be seen as a hassle, but since it's necessary, we realized that um, if pay is strong and there's a lot of benefits for the drivers, um, that it'll be a uh, benefit. So based off our research, safety was, we concluded that safety was the number one priority um, for our customers. And consistency. So drivers want to have a consistent way of earning money. So if they can have, if they can go out on whenever they want on their hours and have their riders who constantly want to have and need rides, then that would be better so that they can know that they will always be earning money whenever they go on. So after I have our hypothesis, we went into the field and we did a lot of research, both online and in-person with interviews. So as Tommy said earlier, since this week was two, um, since this challenge was two weeks, we split the first week talking about or researching the customer side of the market because we really wanted to understand what the customers for Parents in Motion were looking for. So then in the second week, we could find that ideal driver um, that Parents in Motion wants. And when we went out and conducted interviews, we went to two different places. We went to the metropolitan area, or not metropolitan, the metro RTA area in Cleveland, and we went to the Beachwood place. And although those are two very different places and very different audiences, we found that all, uh, all in all those two places have the same things in common, where they want a cost-effective tra mode of transportation, their ride needs to be reliable, and they rely on the safety factor. Going off of that, we were very, very fortunate enough to have a wonderful interview with the, C the Uber CEO, the current CEO. Um, it wasn't it wasn't face to face or on the phone, but we were able to email him questions, and this really, really launched our solution because uh, obviously all of you have heard of Uber. It's a very successful company with a very successful business plan, so we were able to use some of their strategies um, to get drivers uh, to help our solution. So that was very key in our solution. So our partners, the partners that um, Uber had um, that we gathered after the interview are Hertz, Fair, and Localiza. And the Uber CEO said that they um, had these partners because for drivers that wanted to drive for Uber but didn't have a car, couldn't afford a car, they would be able to do the system where they use their car and then um, a portion of the money would go back to them. So especially in a startup, that would be key for people who want to drive and like the message. We can't really afford a car. And so that's a great partnership that they have. And also, um, Uber does something called driver rewards, which is they just launched this program that um, that benefits the driver. They get rated by their customers, and then they get benefits such as like car maintenance and um, like new like uh, tires and all this other stuff based on like what kind of level they're at from the rewards. And Uber also released rider rewards, where it, um, where the riders can have prioritized pickups, more efficient rides, and uh, free deliveries on Uber Eats and more. And with their customer satisfaction rate is 85%. Mm -hmm. And based off of this evidence and like what we can use from Uber's um, ideas for motion, <coughs> um, going off of this, we proving our assumptions. So this is. This is just a main quote that we took out of the interview. We thought this was very key, like Lily was talking about with the um, Uber Pro. They, if that, that's a big incentive for drivers to drive between Lyft and Uber. If they see that Uber Pro is a thing, and if they drive enough, they're gonna get um, money off their gas and money off car maintenance, because if you're driving a car for full time, that stuff's gonna come into play a lot. So that's a big like factor, pushing factor. So we figured if 
PIM really holds that with them, and they, if they get drivers that will drive consistently, giving them money off gas will want people to also drive for them, because that's a big factor when you're making money. So next, looking at our final driver demographic, um, this is a little statistic about uh, the age demographic that we're shooting for. So as you can see, 37% of Gen X are unemployed, so this is a great opportunity um, for that age demographic to move in. And this is a quick graph of showing how many people are on their cellular devices, on apps on their cellular devices. And it goes with the blue is the time and the red is the uh, apps used per month. So as you can see, millennials are the largest range of how many people use apps on their iPhone. So that would be the, that's kind of who the rider would be. And that's how many people would look at their phone and who needs a ride. So we, uh, we, <laughs> okay, so off of, based off of our evidence and like what we've gathered from our, all of our interviews, these are the kind of ideas that we've come up with. Okay, so we think that it'd be best without, with conducting our interviews and with everything we've been researching, we found that people would feel more comfortable if they knew what the driver, how many qualifications the driver had before they let their loved one or themselves be put in a car with them. Then we also want to move towards a mobile app because more people are on their phones, that's the point of the graph before, the more people are on their phones, so more people will be able to see the app and see who will be able to take them, such as parents in motion. And then moving into advertising, meaning that there's more of an incentive for drivers to get started and more of, more of a need for riders to start with PIM. So I quickly put together a quick ad that has pretty much the PIM colors and what you can do with this ad is put it in many different places. With the new tools on Instagram and Facebook, you can market towards specific demographics. So we'll get into the demographics that you should market this towards later. But for right now, this would be perfect on a website like care.com, like an advertisement where you open the website, you pull up this. If you're a babysitter looking to log in or put something on, you're like, oh, I can drive part time, earn more, personalized hours, benefits. Who wouldn't like that if you're looking? And so basically you could either see your ad on like a, a website or a company of a babysitting or like babysitters for example because they fit the ideal like profile of safety. And so you could either, so basically on care.com for example you can click in what kind of, um, what kind of job you want to go into and like you can with your, for like younger kids and so like let's just say like you can click on driver and then what the site will show you is like all the other companies of driver companies you can work for like near you and so yeah. so here is the ideal driver who would be the best so we actually came up with three ideal drivers because it's hard to fit one person under an entire umbrella obviously you can have the same demographics but you're going to be a different person at the end of the day so we figured there's three main things babysitter driving instructors and retired workers that have three they you typically have will have two benefits and one negative. Obviously, babysitters they're going to work well with kids. They're going to be reliable and they will be pretty easy to pay. But obviously, babysitters will probably come on the younger age of things, so they might not be as safe. And then you have driving instructors and retired workers that fall under the different categories, but they're all benefiting from different things. Driving instructors they're really safe behind the wheel, and retired workers they have a lot of time on their hands, but they might not be as reliable. And so those are our three. Wow, so 